These are 12 options on how to buy real estate without using your money. So number one is the simple one, I think. Let's start simple and then let's get to the more complex, is you can go to the bank, right? Think about it for a second. If the bank's putting up um, 75, 80%, 65, 80%, 85%, whatever the loan to value is, the banks are gonna be putting up some money. First of all, I just wanted to thank each and every one of you. Um, they truly, that you've taken time out of your busy schedule to um, come out to this. And I, I wanna honor that time commitment you're making by delivering something of very high value. I wanna deliver something of very high quality. I also wanna deliver something that will actually help you move forward. So that's really what uh, one of the main intentions here. And as you know, my core value is to always inspire, encourage, and come from a place of love. So that's what you can count on me for here today. Okay, so today's topic of du jour is as follows. We're gonna help you bust through one of the biggest obstacles. Now remember last week, for some of you that maybe watched last week's presentation, um, we talked about um, the, the biggest obstacles you have faced in real estate. And I left one of them out at the end. It starts with the letter M and it, it comes around to money. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some time and we're gonna go through and we're gonna bust through one of the biggest obstacles you will face in this game of real estate. And one of my main intentions here today is to show you a proven path, show you something that works, show you something that's quite easy. Because to, to be honest, if a guy from Saskatchewan like myself short, bald-headed guy from Saskatchewan can do this kind of stuff. Guys, you guys, the, the, the world is your oyster. Truly, the world is your oyster. And what I'm, but my goal is not to give you something and overwhelm you and talk about billion-dollar portfolios, even though um, some people I work with have billion-dollar portfolios, people I've uh, interviewed and things like that. But my entire intention is to show you how to buy just one more place just one more property. And what is one more property equal to you? It all depends on what your, uh, what the, what your numbers look like. And it all depends on, on um, what, um, it all depends on uh, the size of your property. If you're buying multifamily or single family. So there's, everybody's one more property means something a little bit different to them. So let's talk about this. So really we're gonna talk about the money and we're gonna talk about where do you get the capital. We're gonna talk about the down payments. We're gonna talk about we're going to talk about the financing. We're going to talk about the banks. We're going to talk about all the ways that you can get uh, financing and get the money to buy real estate. Because remember, um, one of my early mentors told me the following message, and this was something that stuck with me very early. One of the biggest, and I think I just shot a video on this and sent it out, a video just this past, past week. The best advice I ever received, and I received it very early, was that money was required to buy real estate. But the good news is it doesn't have to be your money which was really good for me to learn that lesson because I had to go and learn how to raise capital from other people. And I've truly spent the last 15 plus years to master this subject. I've spent almost, almost two decades on this one topic to try and go as deep as humanly possible to learn as much as I can taking action for myself, but training everybody who wants to learn along this, wants to be part of the journey and wants to take a deeper dive into what I have to offer. And, and truly, if anybody wants to listen or any consultations or people that want to just keep moving forward, if you're bumping up against a wall, the capital will come up. Obviously, it will come up in the, in the conversation. Okay, so let's just, a um, couple quick insights here for you at first is number one is this is 100% my perspective. And I shared this with you guys last uh, week that these, I'm sharing with you how I look at the world through the lenses I look at. Um, now, here's the thing. These eyes and the lenses that I'm looking at have been through uh, multiple millions of dollars of transactions, uh, have been through some pretty big mistakes, have been through probably, I probably have made all the errors and mistakes out there so you guys don't have to worry about it. I've made them all, so don't worry about that. Um, I've taken an awful lot of action, but I've also, here's the thing is I've trained a lot of people, probably tens of thousands of people on this whole concept of raising capital, um, you know, wrote the book on it, all kind of wonderful things like that. And, and you know what, I'm not saying that, um, you know, I'm probably saying I'm the one who's been doing it the longest in this country. And I would hazard a guess that a lot of people that you maybe have heard about these concepts and things like that, maybe, um, probably heard it from me, and that's just because I've been around the block the longest in this thing. So I'm sharing with you from my perspective. Okay, so let's dive into this. Um, you know, I was sitting here and I was putting together this, and I, I truly have resources that I could train on this topic for probably better part of a month, 
nonstop, and I probably still would not scratch the surface. When it comes to this topic about just raising the capital, um, here's the analogy I use. Is, is It's almost like sometimes some people come to you and say, Russell, teach me how to raise the money to buy all the real estate I want to build a portfolio. And I'm sitting there going, holy moly. Um, okay, here's the analogy I use. Is Well, okay, now I'm going to teach you how to fly an airplane. There's an awful lot of nuances, and there's a lot of trial and error, and there's a lot of action, and there's just lots of multiple steps that we have to take in this. So I have a very daunting hurdle to overcome. And the hurdle is as follows. I have so much information, I have so much knowledge and so much experience and so many resources that I can go into. Honing it down into just an hour presentation is a very difficult, daunting task. Um, and what I had to do when putting together this training is I had to make a decision. I had to make a decision of um, glossing over the surface, and just tiptoeing over a few little things and just giving you just, just a little bit of an appetite. Or I actually made the choice to go really deep into just one section of this mastery topic. Okay, so and, and if you stick around right to the end, I actually have a really cool uh, resource for you. And I also have a, a very special announcement as well. But I'm going to go really deep into this, this one topic today. So that's the hurdle I'm having to overcome. I had to make that choice. Do I tiptoe across the surface or do I go really deep both feet in into this one topic? And I chose to go really deep. Okay, so guys, here's what I'm going to do. So real quick recap. This is actually a third presentation, third week in a row. Um, week number one, what we did was we sat down and we built you a plan. We built you a real estate plan. Whether you follow my plan or you have your own plan, that's irrelevant. The main thing is that you have a plan. And your plan would require that you actually buy and acquire assets, that you buy real estate. And you need capital in order to buy that portfolio of properties. I can almost guarantee each and every one of you that is going to be watching this, you do not have all the money in your bank account to buy all the properties you want. So you're going to need to learn how to raise the capital. So then after that, we went through, and the second week I talked about what are the obstacles that are going to stand in your way. Like truly, what can stand in your way? And I share with you guys the acronym of TEAM. So the biggest obstacles you will face in this game, number one is you don't have a team, right? Or you have, don't have a, the right size team to help you move forward. And then the T stands for time. Right? You don't have the time to do this. E stands for your education level. A stands for your attitude or mindset. And then M stands for the money, which is what we're going to dive into here today. This analogy and this acronym is what I use when I have consultations with people all the time. And one of the questions will always come up is, what should I invest in? You know, where should I spend my time? What should I focus on? I need to focus. What do I focus? And then I will write down this analogy, T-E-A-M. And then that's how I walk people through a consultation. So you know, let's just say we had a consultation right now. You and I are having a consultation and you said, well, Russell, well, what should I buy and where should I buy? OK, well, let's really have a let's break this down. Number one is team. Do you have a team? Um, the answer is yes or no. OK, if it's yes, then what's your team look like? OK, good. Do you have a lot of time? Do you have a lot of time to invest in real estate to put into the search and the source and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, yes or no. Let's say you say no. OK, well, OK, good. What's your education level? What's your experience level? Um, I'm a beginner, okay? What's your mindset? Do you have a, a high risk tolerance or a low risk tolerance? Pretty low risk tolerance, okay? And then do you have the money? What, where does your capital fly? Well, you know what? Uh, I, I have access to $20,000. Okay, so you have a small team. You don't have the time. Your expertise and education is starting. Um, you have a low risk tolerance and you only have about $30,000. So my advice to you would be that you probably need to start getting into, first of all, you need to educate yourself more. You need to get hang around with the right people. And then you need to probably raise capital in order to buy your first property because $30,000 in a lot of markets probably won't be able to get you uh, your first place. In some markets, yes, some markets, no. But you see how that acronym would work that I could hone in on a course of action. And so then we would sit there and go, and then we'd have the next level conversation about uh, where do you want to invest? You know, are you okay out of town, in town? Where do you live? What are the fundamentals? And it's just an entire conversation from there. So we're going to talk about the money. We're going to talk about raising capital. We're going to talk about the four building blocks of success. There are, there are four main pillars of success in this game and the action. This is part of the process that I walk a lot of people through. Now, each and every one of these pillars, honest to goodness, could be an entire day's conversation. And I'll, I'll save it for you. I'll share what I'm going to do for you here as well for everybody. So number one thing that we need to do is we need to really understand why. 
we need to understand why we need to raise the capital. And some of you might be going, well, Russ, I already know I, I, already know I need the money. I know I need it. So, so let's skip this part. But this is important that I, I'm a firm believer it's not sometimes important that it's the how and the what. So those are important. But more importantly, why? Why you're doing this is more important than sometimes the what and the hows. Okay, so why do we need to learn how to raise capital? Number one, money is required to buy real estate. If you haven't hit that big brick wall right now, you will. And if you haven't hit it yet, you haven't been in the game long enough. Whether that's banks putting up roadblocks or whether that's just down payment capital, you will run out of your own personal investment capital. And here's the thing. Um, if you guys are taking time out of your busy day to be on a live stream like today, you have goals, you have dreams, you have aspirations, and you have a, a dream for a portfolio probably greater than one, two, three, four, five properties. Some of you have an aspiration of 18, 20, 40, 300, 3,000, 300,000, whatever your number is, that's important to you. But here's the thing. You don't have access in your own personal bank account to the resources that you need to buy real estate. And every real estate investor that I know that has built a portfolio of significant size has had to learn the skills of raising capital from others. So here's the thing. If you want to be successful in real estate, if you want to build a portfolio of properties, you will need to master this skill. This truly is a secret of the wealthy and the successful in real estate. And think about this. Test this out for, for, for me. The next meetup group you go to, real estate meetup group or conference or seminar or any of those kind of things, find the people in that room that have a, a crowd of people around them, okay? That they're sitting there and they're just chatting away and there's probably five, six, seven, ten, a hundred people standing around them, okay? That person that's usually doing a lot of the talking, I bet if you go up to them, if you eventually ask them the question is, do you know, I bet you know how to raise money from other people. And, I, and they'll go, yeah, absolutely, that's one of my superpowers. So if you want to be truly successful in this game of real estate, you will need to learn the superpowers of raising capital from other people. Okay, so a couple more reasons why. Number one is it gives you an alternative to the bank, right? Like, oh, geez, thanks, uh, thanks, bank, for lowering the um, interest rate qualification rules again yesterday. Well, geez, thanks, guys. That was really nice of you. But wouldn't it be nice to just have options outside of the bank. Like, don't get me wrong, I love the banks and they're always my first opportunity and they're the first people I always go to for the capital, but it is nice to have more option. And here's the true thing is if you have more options than other investors, you will actually have more opportunities to keep moving forward. Um, acceleration, speed, growth, leverage. Leverage is one of the biggest advantages you have within real estate. And when we're talking about leveraging other people's capital and then potentially on top of also leveraging the bank's money, we're talking about some serious leverage, right? We're talking about some serious growth, some serious acceleration. And then this last one is the one that most people do not um, actually pay enough attention to. And it's as following. Number, it is, this is an opportunity for you to help others. Maybe there are people in your life, maybe they're family members, coworkers, maybe there are people that you associate with that are getting a crappy return on their investments and they don't even know how to do the stuff that you know how to do and you can actually provide them a better return than they could do on their own. This gives you an opportunity for you to help them. You're, you're gonna get out of your vocabulary instantly you're not asking anybody for nothing. You're not begging for anybody for nothing. You're not, you're actually giving somebody an incredible opportunity to make them money and you're going to participate with them making money. You see how that frame is different? Is I don't ask and I don't beg and I don't say people need to give me money. I give people opportunities for them to win and I participate in them winning along. I, I participate with their win. Okay, so enough of that. So let's give you 12 options. Right, here's 12 options and we're going to take a dive into some of the training here today is going to be applicable to almost all the options in the four building blocks that we're going to talk to. So here are the 12 options. Now guys, if you're taking notes, I hope you have yourself a pen and paper or if you're watching on your mobile, maybe take a screenshot of these slides as they come up after they're completed and Facebook them out, tweet them out, share them out, um, write a blog post, whatever you want. These are 12 options on how to buy real estate without using your money. So number one is the simple one, I think. Let's start simple and then let's get to the more complex, is you can go to the bank, right? Think about it for a second. If the bank's putting up um, 75, 80%, 65, 80%, 85%, whatever the loan to value is, 
the banks are going to be putting up some money. They also might give you additional lines of credit. They also uh, ec borrow against other equity. They might also give you unsecured lines of credit. They might give you those things. So really, that is an option is to make sure you go to the banks and you tap out with the banks. Then there's private lenders out there. Right now, the private lending space is just exploding. It's, I see an awful lot of the Wild West that's going on out there. And there's, there's you know, you know, maybe I'll shoot an entire video uh, on private lending, which I did with uh, my members of the Raising Capital Academy. We had an entire webinar for an hour and a half, and we went into private lending, how to protect yourself as the borrower, how to protect yourself as the lender, how the documents, all the stuff. Maybe I'll do another training for you guys there as well. But private lending is a wonderful resource there. The RSPs, there's trillions of dollars sitting in RSPs. And guys, did you know that you can use other people's RSPs to invest in real estate? Uh, that is a wonderful strategy. And then the other one here is a vendor take back mortgage. Vendor take back mortgage is a very sophisticated strategy to use to use other people's money. Essentially, you're using the seller's money as part of the money to buy the property. Now, I have a couple asterisks beside this one just to remind me to make a quick announcement. Guys, stick around to the end. And if you are interested, I have a killer free gift that I'm going to offer to each and every one of you that are on live here today. And it has to do with vendor take back with a vendor take back training. OK, and that's all I'm going to say. You have to stick around to the end because I believe people that come out live and stick around to the end should get all the rewards. So the next one here, I'm going to go through these a few quick. My intention is not to teach each and every one of them. Let's put it this way. There are entire training programs and courses that just teach each one of these topics in, in and of itself. Um, there's lease options, there's options, there's rent to owns, there's agreements for sale, there's purchase for sale, there are different names in different provinces, there's limited partnership, offering memorandums, there's syndications, all different avenues that you can use. And then it's funny, and then there's REITs, debt investors, equity investors, and the last one is joint ventures. Um, and the reason why I left joint ventures at the end and I put it in big and bold is I call joint ventures the gateway. I call it the gateway of raising capital. Because every, and I know some large institutional investor real estate experts that still do joint ventures to this day. But think about it for a second. I think everybody can do it, whether it's your first one or it's your 1,000th one. I think a joint venture is a wonderful way of doing it. It's often the way, the gateway into one of those other strategies that we talked about. It's actually, a, a, I call it an enhancer strategy too, that you can take joint venture and then add that on top of another thing that you're doing as well. Um, what was one of the other examples I heard? Oh, good friend of mine, Travis McConaughey. He, um, he does joint venture on his on his resident on his farmland out in Saskatchewan. He owns the land. He joint ventures with another farmer in the area. The other farmer comes in and they, they farm the land. And Travis gets paid for that. And he does a joint venture. He gives them the land and he gives them all the the uh, machinery, not machinery, he gives them all the um, space and the quonsets and all the, the farm uh, area. And then he does a joint venture and he makes money off of that joint venture of his farmland. OK, so there's multiple different ways you can do this. So we're going to talk about the four building blocks. So we've identified. Let's just do a quick bookend. So we talked about why we need to learn how to master this, this strategies. We talked about 12 um, opportunity or 12 strategies to do that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to dive into the four building blocks, the four building blocks of success. Now, interesting to note, each one of these building blocks um, can apply to whether you're doing private lenders, it uh, can apply if you're using um, uh, LPs and REITs. It can apply if you're using um, RSP mortgages. It can apply if you're doing rent to own. So all those 12 strategies, these building blocks are applicable to all of them. Building block number one is you need to create a lead. OK, create leads. Building block number two is you need to amplify interest qualification. Building block number three is you need to structure opportunities and structure deals. And then building block number four is you need to hustle and execute. I'm going to give you guys a little secret here and a little secret um, training here. Uh, want to know a powerful way to, to do presentations is to, is to um, learn how to use acronyms in your teaching, right? So if you learn how to use acronyms in your teaching, here's the thing is, if my slide deck crashed or I didn't even actually have access to it, today, if I remembered four acronyms, I could deliver probably a 90 minute keynote just by understanding four acronyms. OK, so that's the only thing I have to remember. Eventually, I would hone it down to just four things. 
And today, what we're going to talk about in depth is we're going to create leads, okay? And I'm going to share with you guys the easy framework for uh, creating leads. And today's training, I'm just going to go deep into the one thing of that's creating um, the leads and how, and most people will be stumble and get st and, and stuck on where are the investors? That's usually one of the things I hear most often from people that uh, are looking for investment capital. So we're going to talk about leads. So a couple key concepts that we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about attraction, not pursuit. We're going to talk about these strategies I'm going to share with you are for people that hate sales, okay? There's no salesy here. It's not gonna be sales. This is just a natural conversation that you're gonna have with people. You're eventually gonna have a track. You're going to, pardon, this may sound like a really bad analogy, but think about it for a second. You're eventually gonna become the cheese and the people are, the mice are gonna to come to the cheese, okay? You're going to attract people to you, okay? That's what we want to have happen. We're going to have investors come to you and there will eventually come a time when you will have more investors and more capital than you actually have deals and opportunities. Now, some of you will be sitting there going, Russ, yeah, I, I, I can't wait for that day. And trust me, if you learn the process, if you learn the skills, if you get trained by some of the best of the best and you focus on mastery of this skill set, you will be at a point where you will have more money and more capital than deals to put it to. And when you do get to that point, you can come back and good old Uncle, Uncle Russ here, you can, you can give him, buy him a coffee and say thank you, okay? Um, so we're gonna follow the easy system of how you become attractive to capital. So the easy is another acronym. Look, a second acronym, cash and easy. Those are two simple words that I can remember on an ongoing basis. So here's some of the things. Um, the E in easy stands for enthusiasm. Do you have enthusiasm? Are you excited? Are you excited about real estate? Do you actually, you know, share the things you know? When you, when you walk into a room, you're just a, a bright light and you just sit there and you go, I'm not telling you to be put things on, but I'm just telling you to be excited about what you're doing. Sometimes people feed off that energy of that excitement about what you're doing. Can you tell me, can you tell I'm excited about doing this presentation? I love doing this. I could do this all day long. As a matter of fact, I am doing one, two, three. I'm probably doing almost four hours of training of like this today alone. And I add probably an, at least five or six hours of training a week to my vault and to my inner circle clients of members that I have and I train them with things. And, but I, I honestly create stuff like this all day long because I love it. This is exciting to me because I bring some enthusiasm to it. Okay. The A stands for authentic. Be yourself. Be true. You know, only share what you can do. Don't overstate what you can do. Don't overpromise. One of the biggest mistakes I made on this game thing is I overpromised early in the game. And I never did to potentially educate the investors about what could go wrong and maybe some of the downside risks as much. I got people very excited with my enthusiasm but I did not potentially give them the full, not I didn't give them, I just didn't understand the full story until I actually went through the full story. And now almost two decades later, I've been through ups, I've been down, I've been through sideways, I've been through most of it. And all of those, op those things that I've been through, some of those challenging times, those challenging times have actually made me become a better investor along the way. And just be authentic to who you are of sharing your story. Be authentic to that. Um, you're always going to be in on service. First and foremost, you're going to provide a service to the other person. You're going to provide a service to your investor. You're going to help the investor win first. You're going to provide a service to them. And then the last one is in the wealth attraction, which is the most important is you. Okay. You are the investment that your investors are buying into. Never forget that this is gonna be a personal relationship that you're gonna be walking through an investment partner. This is gonna be a personal relationship. And this is uh, one of my um, one of my good friends, Dave Steele, shared this once and I, I said, I, I love that saying is, most time investors bet on the jockey, not the horse, okay? You're the jockey of the horse. They're betting on the jockey to ride the horse to a winning, to a winning ride, okay? Most of the investors are gonna be betting on you not the house or not the horse. And then it's important about how you show up and then more importantly about how you can help them. Like truly what is, most people would sit there and I see this all the time on Facebook's groups is I'm looking for the money. I wanna, I need this much money. 
And then they forget to answer the question is, what are you providing to the investor for them to exchange their hard earned money for your investment opportunity? Have you given thought to what you contribute and how you can help them? Have you given thought about how you can help them with their goals and dreams and aspirations? You have to show them how you can help them before you get an investor coming on board with you. So here's a four step formula on how to attract your ideal investor. Um, normally at this time when I talk about an ideal investors, usually the comment comes up, people will say is, well, where do I find these people, right? Where are these people? Where do I find them? Okay, so that's actually the wrong question to answer, the where. Okay, before we get to the where, there's actually a couple other questions you need to ask before you have a conversation about where. So here's the formula. There's actually four parts to it. You actually want to talk about who. Who is the most important part to the formula first? So you want to talk about who first, then you want to talk about their why, then you want to talk about where they hang out, then after that, you're going to position yourself for success. The most important per thing you need to talk about first is who are your ideal investment partners as well. Okay, so who and why. We're gonna take a little bit of time here and I'm gonna walk you through identifying your investor per persona. Then I'm gonna give you guys a, a, a check, not a checklist, a, an entire um, brainstorm list of some ideas for you to implement into your business. We're gonna just talk about your one investor. Okay, your one dream investor. Now, I, in my personally with myself, I actually have three. I have three investor personas. Okay, and I'm not going to share them with you here, but I've taken the time, which I'll walk you through the process here. But I have three different people that are my ideal investors. The key thing that you want to do is you want to speak to one at a time because all three of these people that I have as my investment partners are completely different people. And I have to make sure that in any of my communication, in my presentation, any of my strategy sessions or conversations, I have to make sure I know who I'm talking to in order to offer the right language and words to help them move forward, okay? C truly, if you have a tighter definition of who your investor is, you will get greater precision and you will get greater results. This step here, most people do not do this work. Okay, it's one of the fundamentals of anything we're going to talk about in any marketing, any business, anything is if you don't know who your ideal investment partner is, you need to stop. Don't keep banging your head against a wall because you're, you're like a ship without a rudder and you have no idea where you're going and you're just looking for everybody and you're, and you're complaining and being frustrated that nobody wants to invest with you. Because the first question I would ask most people is, well, who's your ideal investment part personas? Describe them to me. And then, okay, once I've got that, okay, then the next part after that is why would they want to invest with you? And then the part after that is where do those people hang out? And then the part after that is how do you position yourself in front of them where they're hanging out so that they come to you? Remember, investor attraction. Okay. Um, and then we're going to create a detailed list. Now, here's what we're going to do here. I'm just going to hide myself for a second. Guys, if you get a chance, take a, just take a snapshot of this slide. OK, this is a detailed checklist of all the questions that you might want to ask um, yourself when doing your investor per personas. You uh, will walk through this entire thing and you talk about their details, their names, their genders, their age, eye color, hair color, where they live, their family, their interests, what they do for fun, their hobbies. What do they spend their free time doing? What's unique to them? Are they Mac or PC? What kind of vehicles do they drive? What kind of, where do they live? What kind of language do they use? Associations, who do they follow? What podcasts do they listen to? Okay, that's the level that I want you guys to get to when talking about your investor personas. So that, I, so I hope everybody got a chance to take a snapshot of that screen. And if any of you are watching this on the replay, you, I believe you can probably pause it and take a snapshot of that. That is an ideal checklist of questions that is just a thought starter for how do you um, rate your investor avatar. So here's the next thing I'm gonna do is, now remember this is that you are now a solution provider to them. You're either helping them move towards pleasure to win at something, to, to possess something, to increase status. I've had uh, an investment partner that I've worked with uh, multiple times that one of the things is I know for a fact is he just likes new stuff. He likes brand new stuff. He likes high end stuff, okay? Because he likes the, the status of a high end. He does like, I don't even wanna show him a crappy old place, 
okay? Because he wants to possess something. He wants to move towards something. He wants to be able to tell his friends, look at this beautiful place that we're investing in, okay? So that's one thing. Is you have to, how do they want to move towards pleasure? But more people are actually in the second one is more people want to actually move away from pain. They want to escape something. They want to stop something. So here's the question I want you to ask is, you're not offering an investment opportunity to somebody. Here's the question that's really important is, what problems are you solving for your real estate investors? If you can clearly answer the problems you're solving for your investment partners, you will have a greater chance of having investment partners work with you as opposed to just, well, I have a house, it's on, 42nd Avenue, it's got this cash flow, it's got this rent, and the fundamentals are it's going to grow at 2.7%. But here's the thing is, what problem are you solving? Maybe you're solving the problem of that they are self-employed and they're a doctor and they actually have no pension plan. And what they do is they spend more money than it's coming in. And what they just need to do is they need to take their $200,000 a month and they need to divest it into another asset class outside of their business. And they wanna use real estate as their pension plan. And maybe you walk them through the, the three, two, one free program and you show them that with your investment partners, here's how you can buy nine. And in 15 years, you'd have three free and clear places that would generate $92,000 a year. You see how these things are all fitting all together? Right? And what you're doing is you're becoming a solution provider to your investor. You're not becoming a real estate person offering a house. Uh, all right. So here's an example. I'm going to share an example of one of my coaching clients. Um, I thought I did a pretty good job of identifying my um, investor avatars. I actually have my three investor avatars is a five, is three is a three slide PowerPoint presentation with each one being a slide. So one of my coaching clients took this and they created, I think it was like a 27 page PowerPoint presentation of their ideal investor avatar. And, um, you know, they're of Russian descent and they invest and they get have very good success in the Russian community. And they actually identified who the people were right down to the kids and where they vacation and the ages and the names and all this kind of wonderful stuff. So they took the time to do that. And lo and behold, they're raising capital. Okay. Interesting. It's not a coincidence that that's happening. So that's on the who and the why. Now we're going to talk about where and how do you position. Where means where do these people hang out? So you know who you want, who your investor is. You know why they want to invest with you. Now, where do these people hang out and how do you position yourself to be in front of them to start having them attract to you? So how do you get in front of your ideal investors. So here's a couple things. I firmly believe in this fall in this quote. This quote is by Pete Cashmore is we are living in we're living at a time where attention is the new currency. Attention is a currency and it almost sounds really, you know, kindergarten-ish or, or <laughs> something like that that you know, look at me, look at me, look at me, but it's interesting how that is actually a major currency out there right now is those who have the most attention actually will get a lot of business come to you. If you think that's not the case, go take a look at Gary Vaynerchuk or go take a look at the Ed Milets, the Tony Robbins, all those people online and the Grant Cardones of the world. Take a, take a picture, look at all those people and see how much attention they're fostering. So attention is an absolute currency. So really what you want to do from here is you want to make a plan. Okay, so what's the plan? So we, we know who our ideal investor is. We know why they would want to work with us. Then what we want to do is a plan of finding out where they hang out. Like, here's a concept. This is a concept. It's not unique to me. It's a concept that I learned from Chet Holmes, from the ultimate sales machine. Chet Holmes was the original of this concept about talking about who the key 100 is. So here's the, in, in a really simple concept, here it is. Who are the key 100 people, the 100 influencers that have the attention of your ideal investor avatar? And you, what you want to do is you want to make a list of who those ideal key influencers are and find a way how you can position yourself to be of value and of service to those key influencers. And those key influencers are the gatekeepers to your ideal investments, investor partners. I have some more detailed uh, strategies here. and I have some more examples I'll share with you in a second. Then what you need to do is you need to become service to that person. You need to offer value. You need to find out how you can help 
that key influencer. Then what you do is you sit down each day and you brainstorm who those people are. Then you reach out to them. The, 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 the fortune is in the follow-up. You keep following up and keep following up and you keep reaching out to these people and you become a PhD. Now, PhD, for some of you might think that that's you know, a doctorate degree. In this case, PhD stands for pig-headed determination. PhD, pig-headed determination. You just will not take, eventually take no for an answer. And, but don't be one of those people that, <laughs> that, is, that wears out your welcome, but you just keep following up. The fortune is in the follow-up and you just keep following up and you have PhD, pig-headed determination. Now here's a couple examples. Okay guys, so here's an example. Um, associations, here's one of my coaching clients, Michael Bug. Uh, I, I don't know if Mike's on or not, if he's watching here today. Fantastic guy, uh, investor out of Saskatoon. Michael is a former veterinarian. And lo and behold, his ideal investor avatar are veterinary owners. And he has an entire, you know, detailed uh, description of who they are. His last one, two, three investment partners have been um, our um, veterinarians that either have their own clinic or former ones. And I think he's almost 400. I, I bet he's probably almost up to about three quarters of a million dollars capital raise in the last little while. I'm sorry, Mike, if I'm correct and wrong. I definitely know of a couple of them for sure. Um, but here's, here's an example. So Mike, was uh, he's left the profession as a veterinarian, and he was at a conference in Banff, and he was shooting a video there, and he was networking with veterinarians, and he was having conversations about finding out their pain points, how he can help them, talking to them about real estate, talking about ways that they can, instead of being a slave to their practice seven days a week, how can you get down to five days a week, or four and a half days a week, or three days a week, Okay. So he is still attending all his associations and he's actually launching a podcast in um, the world to support veterinarians, not to educate real estate investors because his ideal investor avatar is veterinarians. So he's going to actually do some things about helping veterinarians combat um, decision fatigue and burnout and uh, the whole thing about, uh, and it's a very prevalent in that world and also prevalent in doctors and dentists and lawyers and things like that too. But how do you become a solution provider to those people? Okay, isn't that a wonderful example? Here's another one. Here's one of my other um, clients, um, coaching client. She's in the tech world. She's actually works for a very big, large corporation in the tech industry. And lo and behold, in the tech world, there's two types of people. Typically, there's young millennials up and coming people, and then there's the old established people that are in there as well that maybe have the capital and maybe they're retiring another five or six years. Her two personas are both those two people, okay? Help the young up and comers maybe get into their, she's also a realtor, help those young up and comers get into their first property, and then potentially help them after that get into another investment opportunity after that get the young up and comer ex you know get the young up and coming executives in tech get them early be before they become experienced in that and then her other investor avatars the people that are maybe looking to retire the people that have been in the tech industry for 20 30 years and go forth so those things so she keeps going to conferences having those conversations with people and those are her ideal investor avatars. This next one here, um, one of my coaching clients out in um, Sudbury, um, he's doing fantastic work on social media. Most of almost all his clients that have come out of, uh, out of uh, things of his investment partners have all been found through social media, through his Facebook. Now, he probably pushes the edge a little bit to my comfort level about how his messaging is, about how aggressive he is with his, with his messaging about an offering investment opportunities, but he's had very good success of getting people through groups and associations and social media groups as well, okay? This next one here is meetups. One of uh, my client, one of my people who I helped out early, Sam, out in Kamloops, and everyone out there, there's one, two, Four of my coaching clients actually run their own meetup groups. Um, and one of the th intentions of their meetup groups is to bring people together. They're the leader of the group, and out of that group comes experts, or, or comes capital. Uh, for example, Cam out of Sam, and, and, and Sam out of Kamloops, you know, got to slow down here a little bit. Um, one of the people that came out of, out of there was one of his uh, investment partners is Dr. Rod McLaren. And I'm sorry if I'm sharing names, I probably should change the names. But um, uh, Dr. Rod became one of his investment partners that grew that, and that came out of a meetup group that he put. And a lot of people that put meetup groups together, and they're the host and the organizers of it, 
um, investment partners come from that as well. Now, the next one I'm going to share, these are two other ones here. Is, um, I know a fellow who, who runs cash flow games. And uh, he runs cash flow games and, and he, he uses the cash flow game as an opportunity to, to educate his expertise and what he knows about real estate, educate his expertise on joint ventures, educate people on how to partner together. And he's got a lot of capital that's come out of hosting cash flow games. So you wonder why a lot of these people have these cash flow games that are across the country? And that's because it works. It's because people get investors that come out of that because they're his ideal investor avatar is brand new in rookie investors coming in and they're interested in learning the ropes and he's going to teach them the ropes. Okay. Now here's the last one I'm going to share with you. And I could share story after story about where my investor partners come. I think it adds more value if I share other people's stories because I actually get more excited about other people's stories. I, I really do. I get ex more excited about the action that, you know, my, my coaching clients or people from the Raising Capital Academy or, or my students or my inner circle clients, I get more excited about the actions they take and I want to share with all their example, examples. Now, this is a story of mine. Now, if any of you have been maybe in this game of real estate investing for a while, and maybe you've seen a presentation of two of mine over the years, you may have heard this one, but this is one of my favorite stories. And it actually serves as a point. The point that it serves is to what length are you willing to turn all conversations into real estate conversations? So I was in Toronto and I was uh, preparing uh, with when I was with the Real Estate Investment Network. And I was preparing for an evening workshop that night. And I woke up that morning and I had a pain in my back so intense, so intense. I had no idea what was happening. I couldn't even get out of bed. The only thing I could potentially get out of bed to do is to go to the bathroom. And I was rolled up in a little ball and I had no idea what was coming. Long story short, I was passing a kidney stone. OK, and if any of you have ever passed a kidney stone, type into the comments. Ouch. It is not a pleasant experience. OK, so lo and behold, um, the hotel called an ambulance, ambulance come 911 in the back of an ambulance sitting there with an intravenous line in and morphine drip and also a diuretic to make things expand a little bit to hopefully pass the kidney stone. If you know, know what I'm talking about um, in the back of the call and, and ambulance on morphine. The uh, paramedic looked looked at me and said, because, um, you know, I'm staying at a hotel out by the airport. And he said, so uh, what are you in town for? And I looked up and I go, do I do this? I said, absolutely. I said, you know what? I'm here to help educate real estate investors on how to buy real estate without using their own money. And I shut up. And then I let the paramedic, he says, well, that's interesting. Yeah, I've always been interested in real estate. Tell me a little bit more. In the back of an ambulance on a morphine drip, I turned the conversation into a real estate conversation. Now, nothing happened of it. What the point I'm trying to get out of all of this is to what length and how willing are you to turn your conversations into real estate conversations when you are meeting a potential investment partner, okay? You need to be willing to at least have the conversation about how you can help somebody else. So dumping forward here. So guys, here's a quote that if you are interested in having, this is what something I firmly believe in. And I could tell you stories until the cows came home about um, adding value to other people um, on, you know, to my key influencers of how I, the gifting, how I add value to them, how I, you know, will give them consultations and stuff. But I firmly believe that if you become so valuable that they can't ignore you, eventually they will want to partner and work with you. OK, so you become so valuable, they can't ignore you. Take a picture and I want everybody to share that one out and quote that one as well. OK, so the next step in the cash formula is amplify interest. Now, how do you take somebody that maybe, you know, your investor avatar? Um, you know why they want to invest. You've positioned yourself and somebody says, you know what? I'm really interested in hearing what you have to say. Awesome. Now, how do you qualify that person? So that's what we're going to talk about next. Now, guys, in order to hear that one, you got to come out next week to hear that part of the tale. So, guys, um, I do have a couple more things, a couple more announcements for you. But next week, I'm going to share with you the next step on the process. And how do you qualify people that have raised their hand and said they're interested. But if you don't do the work about understanding who your investor is, why they want to work with you, where do they hang out, and how are you going to position yourself in front of them, if you have not done those work, the next step in this process is, is a waste of time. I get 
so much joy and excitement by helping other people. I help people move forward and bust through some of the biggest obstacles because here's the thing is all these obstacles that you might be feeling, I'm feeling the same thing. And what I'm doing is I'm studying and I'm training myself to become the person to take things up to the next level, to grow my portfolio, to help others. And my, my goal is actually not to grow my real estate portfolio. My, gro my goal is to help more people grow their portfolio. And I actually, for if any of you have been on these training programs over the last few weeks, my written goal on my whiteboard over here is to inspire 1 million people, 1 million people by 2035 to give you the tools and resources and education and inspiration and encouragement to help you buy one more property, to give you those tools to buy one more property. I want to inspire a million people by 2035. I got 15 years to get her going and doing live broadcasts and sharing these kind of things and helping people and helping busting through some of these, these, uh, these obstacles is how we're going to do that. And with that, I'm going to sign off here and how I sign off most of uh, my videos and training and podcasts is as follows. So guys, you get a chance, make sure in every interaction you have with somebody else that that person leaves feeling inspired, they leave feeling encouraged, and they knew you came from a place of love. If that's your intention, this place will, this place and this world will be a better place for all of us. Okay, with that being said, everybody, have yourself a wonderful day and we'll see you next week. Bye for now. I sure hope you enjoyed this in-depth training video. If you want to continue your education, continue your learning, I've created a playlist for you. Over here, if you just click the link over here, there's a playlist for you that will take you to an entire series of in-depth training material. So just click on over here where Baby Yoda is. Use the force, click the link, and you'll be taken directly there. Thank you very much.